Kevin Martin again off his long run. Greenwich still has the strike. He's also got six. Oh, and that's hit him. He's taken evasive action. He'd get four for that because he was trying to get out of the way. Now, it's the short ball that causes the problem, and straight away the umpire moving across to his colleague to have a talk to him about the light. And that's the point Jeff Boycott and I were making. A silly thing to do, really, because they will now go off, I feel certain. Well, I feel quite honestly, as an opening batsman, I'd be annoyed that I even had to face the first few balls because I think it was the other night they came off 10, 15 minutes earlier. And so they've asked the batsman, and the batsman have said, yes, please, and so off they go. After that brief effort by Gordon Greenwich and Desmond Haynes, the England lead was reduced to 78. For England, that's a... She's rather uncertain out there, as you'll know. What they want is a... She's rather uncertain out there, as you'll know. What they want is a... Is to see the West Indies build up a substantial lead so that come the last day, England have to fight off the fast bowlers for two sessions or even longer. Well, let's join the action now. West Indies made a cautious start, and Gladstone Small is bowling to Desmond Haynes. The score is 25 for no wicket. That's well played. There is a big gap at mid on. And Angus Fraser is not going to make it. So Desmond Haynes hitting that delivery, which was a little bit too straight, really. It's not often you see Gladstone Small stray like this. Yes, yeah, Small a bit offline here, drifting into Haynes's pads, and Desmond Haynes making no mistake. He loves it on his legs. Oh, and that's for... Anything slightly over-pitched is going to be smashed down the ground and there's a lot of roll in that outfield and the ball will just make it over the line. So that's the problem with having so many attacking fieldsmen. Anything that's pitched up is going to go to the boundary. Well, Markham over pitching here to Gordon Greenwich, who doesn't make many mistakes with these. It's straight through the line of the ball, back past the bowler for four. That one, two hits straight down the ground. I don't think this will quite reach, or will it? It's a very fast outfield. Stewart's going to cut it off. Not quite off the meat of the bat. But two good straight drives there. Yes, I think on this sort of wicket, Markham needs to pitch the ball up on a good length. He can't afford to over pitch. And here we see him over pitching again, and Greenwich pushing it up on the onside this time. Well, that reduces the lead now to 50. Lovely shot by Haynes down the ground. That's the best shot we've seen for the day. Well, there's a very big gap there. There's no mid-off fielding there. Uh, I'm a little surprised that Gooch has the thought of blocking it at this stage because there's no swing. Devin Markham hasn't managed to swing the ball. Anything up is really a safe hit, and runs are now very precious indeed. Well, that was an appeal for a leg before. It was rising over the top of the stumps. And that was a uh, very acute judgment on Greenwich's part. I think it's Greenwich's first bit of poor judgment because that might well have taken the bales off with it. It was absolutely in line, but the adjudication was over the top, and that looks over the top there. But a dangerous little practice that. Fine shot by Haynes. He's got that away right down the ground for another boundary. So he moves on to 24. Very quick to capitalize on the half volley.
quite save one, says Graham Gooch. Come on, let's sharpen this up. Let's uh, be on our toes, support the bowler. Angus raises the bowler from the pavilion end to Desmond Haynes, who's 35. Oh, there we are. That's well, that's the batsman's good fortune. It dropped in no man's land. See another ball, the first ball, right in that area, good length, just outside off stump, and this time. Well, that's the batsman's good fortune. It dropped in no man's land. See another ball, the first ball. Right Could have gone anywhere that ball, the batsman could not control it. We saw Devon Malkin's last ball keep low, this one bounces high, hits the top of the splice and flies anywhere. And that's why you must bowl as many balls as possible in the right... That is Clyde Cumberbatch. Uh, looking here to score to a, to a ball. Now Desmond Haynes has just pulled up there. He's uh, he's limping. Desmond Haynes is limping. He's not looked towards the dressing room yet for any attention. Now there's some advice for the uh, for David Capel. And the reason is that Steve Barwick of Glamorgan is the man with the green sh shirt. He's the uh, Glamorgan opening bowler, and Ian Smith with the red hat, looking like the petrol pump attendant. After a word with him. Angus Fraser. Yes, runs here for Desmond Haynes. He he's got a couple of runs. They look for three. The third comes up, and the cheer goes on the ground because that rubs out England's advantage, and all wickets are standing still. Good meaty shot by Greenwich. I thought at the start he shaped the play out on the onside, but in fact he got that sweetly through it off, and it's four runs. Made it into a nice half volley. Yes, he was looking to hit it to the onside, but because he's not looking to hit it too hard, he's careful. He can just caress the ball away through mid off and time the ball. Changes his shot halfway through. That's the hallmark of a great player. And I think that little uh, look on the face of Greenwich tells the story. He is a very determined man. And he certainly is not a fair weather batsman. Oh, he got a little nick on that one and it went straight down. That was very lucky. Just a little bottom edge on it. Well, this one shot by Markham outside the offstone. Payne's trying to pull it through the onside. Not making proper contact, just a little inside edge, the ball not carrying to Russell. I think with this sort of inconsistent bounce, the pull is not a very good shot here. Oh, and that's just outside the line. He's given him out, he's given him out, and Greenwich can't believe it. And I tell you what, I don't blame him either. That was way outside off stump. He's gone a long way forward. And the umpire down that end, umpire Cumberbatch has given him out. Let's have another look. What do you think, Roger? Well, just when things were looking very well for the West Indies, Greenwich came forward to this one from Fraser. Struck where I thought was just aside the off stump. But the umpire was in quite a hurry and was quick to give him out. Certainly was. It's 96 for one. The important thing is how far forward did he go. Now, have a look at this. He comes forward quite a long way there. Big step. The ball hits him right there. That's where it hit him, right there. So it was low enough. It was probably going to go through and hit the stumps. But the question is, was it straight? Was it straight? Oh, he's hit that one magnificently. It's gone in front of square to the mid-wicket boundary. This is the most aggressive shot we've seen all match. He literally watched it all the way onto the bat and murdered it to the boundary. 
Well, this is a fantastic shot. Here, Haynes coming across and clubbing that one in front of square for four. And a wicket where the bounce is unpredictable. He kept his eye on it and hit it in front of him. Well, he's got him, he's out, he's caught in the gully. Lamb makes the catch, that was a good delivery from the quick man there, Malcolm. The ball bounced a little bit, hit the gloves, went flying in the direction of gully. Pretty straightforward catch, and England have struck again. Have a look at this ball. It bounces just short of a length, bounces up a little bit. He's closing the face, and once again, he's out to a similar way to which he got out in Jamaica. That is the end of the captain of the West Indies, and now they are 100 for two. Haynes getting one here, shallow length on a good line and Haynes closing the face up there very early, playing completely across the ball, ball taking the leading edge, very high up on the bat, giving Alan Lam a simple catch. Oh, he's got him, he's got to be out, yes, LBW, good night Charlie, he's on his way, that one kept low as well may well have been going right into the middle of middle and leg I'd say now that he couldn't really help he was playing from the crease my reaction was leg stumpish was it going down the leg side have a look at it it certainly kept low and it would have hit I would have thought middle and leg it was pretty close to leg stump anyhow so that's the end of Carlisle best and England are on fire the West Indies back in trouble 100 for three. Have a look at the reaction here. That went in very low. Watch him. He goes down. I think he sort of shakes his head as if saying, no, 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 can't be right. Surely not. And it's a very, very disappointing Carlisle best there. But that's the way things go in Test Match Cricket. He was right back on his crease and that's probably what brought about his downfall. performance Devon Malcolm is on a hat-trick the ball has kept low it's gone almost under the bat there was nothing much he could do about that perhaps he should have been forward and once again England coming to the party just when it happens when it's really needed 100 for four so we've got a new bugler out there at that uh, bugle this is how it happened well this one is bang on target short of a length keeping low and Dujon playing way above that one but I think after the ball the car had best receivers kept a bit low and he was out there but Dujon should have been looking for a bit of low bounce played much too high the ball didn't get up as much as he expected and just tipped the off stump yes he should have been looking to get forward the back foot and jumping in the air and he won't be very happy when he sees that replay tonight he should have been looking to go forward mind you it's easier said than done that was the first ball he received and that is England's hero Devon Malcolm really performing magnificently well I just cannot believe it what is going on so they've lost four wickets for four runs in eight balls, and that's all taken 13 minutes. So there's a man now a lot squarer. It looks to me as if they're going to try and get Gus Logie to hook one down towards square leg. They're clearly going to give him a few bounces. Oh, and that must be close as well, just outside the line. Well, now he was playing from the crease. Very quick reaction from umpire Barker. It nipped back. Have a look at this delivery. This one pitching outside the off stump, nipping back, hitting Gus rather high on the front pad. And umpire Barker this time giving the batsman the benefit of the doubt. Well, was it going over the top? No way. It was uh, perhaps just outside the line, either that or going down the leg side. Keep your eyes on the ball. Keep your eyes on the ball. 
Well, when he's hit that beautifully through the covers. Into the fence it goes. It was just a little bit wide. He had to roll his wrists on it, but he hit it right in the meat of the bat and into the gap as well. Gorgeous shot, this. Short back cliff, not a full-length delivery, but he's hit right through the line. Look at that back, just up to stump high. Little wrist there and caressed it majestically through the covers. Yes, he hit that on the up. It was certainly not a half volley. Lovely placement. That's the first boundary since all that activity when the wickets were falling. Oh, and uh, that brought a bouncer out of Capel. Quite a quick one, too. Oh, a little fumble, and as a result of that fumble, back comes Richie Richardson for the second. That's what happens when the batsman runs the first run fast, comes back a little bit out of the corner of his eye. Capel could see that, and as a result, he fumbled the ball. Yeah, so these fairly roughish outfields, they're not... There it is, bouncing, it's bobbled, and there's the extra run then. If you're ready for it, you've run it first. Easy second run for Richie Richardson. Oh, he's hit that one, and Pye Smith, it's gone down to the boundary at backward point for four. Well, so having said, Richie Richardson was nice and cool and calm and collected. All he needed was that uh, slightly long half volley, quite wide, and this is a lovely shot. Well, it was. He waited for the ball. He didn't try and hit it too hard. It's quite wide. It's in the right slot, but he just caressed it, slightly open face, used the timing of the ball. Not a bad ball, that. There you are, just behind point. Nice open face, good timing. Relaxed the hands and waited for it. Nice shot. Well, this will be the last over before the tea break. It's been a good session for England. That's well played. He's got four there again. That one just a little short outside off stump. A bad ball, in fact, especially to Gus Logie. He's short. He loves him outside off stump. And he certainly had made a meal of this one. Graham Goose should get all the bowlers together at tea time. Tell them to hold out the hand and say, you must not bowl short and wide to little Gus Logie, because that's his favourite area. Keep bowling fairly straight. Do not give him balls to cut, because he will cut you to ribbons all day long. Magnificent shot from a batsman who's really in form. First over after tee. Ball up to him, bang to mid off. Well, there's certainly no doubt which West Indian batsman has got most confidence. It's not really a half volley that. You see the feet aren't right over there, but he's hit straight through the line. He's so full of confidence after that 98 that anything in his area, he's going to whack it. Well, they're beginning to smile a little bit once more down there. This has been a match in which the emotions have run up and down all the way through. Devon Malcolm here just after tea, not quite got his rhythm yet, not bowling at his best pace. We watch Graham Gooch after each ball. He's trying to signal to, uh, I think it's Bailey at extra cover and Capel at mid on. He's trying to signal to them to G him up to encourage him. He wants some extra pace from Devon Malcolm. He wants a breakthrough. He's caught him. A cut and taken at first slip. Logie going for the cut. Wayne Larkins pulls it down and Malcolm gets his fourth wicket and the West Indies are 142 for five. So there is the cut. Logie getting the top edge, very similar to the way that Ezra Mosley got out in the first innings, and Wayne Larkins just managing to hold on. Well, knocked in short, 
quick. Straight there. Thank you very much. The captain was shouting to them, come on, encourage this fast bowler. He's the man that can make the breakthrough. And he did just that. I think he looks to me like a man under pressure, real pressure. The state of the game is poised that if he or Hooper gets out, I'm afraid uh, England are going to wrap up the game. That's what it looks like, and he will feel the extra pressure and the responsibility that's on him. He's got it through. That'll go all the way for four. So square drive off the front foot to Richardson, carrying the West Indies to 147 for five at the end of the over. Yeah, the ball in the right area. Not a full half volley, but Richardson just caresses it nicely to the boundary. Very good cricket, that. Small ball in it right. Richardson up to the task. Nice, smooth, rhythm rhythmical off drive. So that carries it to 147 for five. Now the West Indies with that deficit on first innings. 89, the deficit, so make the subtraction. subtraction. 58 ahead. And Hooper gets off the mark. Nice, easy push down the ground, well timed. Won't go all the way. Bailey's after it, but he'll get free. That will go all the way. Bailey can give up the chase. Another boundary to Richie Richardson, half volley. So the second boundary from successive balls. Well, a rank half volley there, right up there for Richie Richardson. No problem about hitting the ball. Two bad balls in succession. Tried to bowl a Yorker to Hooper that got him off the mark with a low full toss. And this very easy half volley, right up there. I mean, he could hardly miss it. And I think it uh, won't be long before Graham Goochel be telling his fearless to G up Devon Malcolm, give him some encouragement. And that's away, another boundary for Richardson. But he really still started to go now. All of a sudden, Richardson has received a couple of bad balls and has really put them away, and not too bad either. He really hit that well. Now, some good balls and then one floating down the leg side. Easy hit there for Richardson, just helps the ball on its way. Swings the bat around, he knows it's a free hit. Doesn't have to do anything silly, just help the ball, get some wood on it. And he's bound to get some runs. As it happens, it goes right in the gap for four. Richie Richardson now is in good form. 27, not out. Carl Hooper is three. Lovely shot. That's the very best of Richie Richardson. Gets right out of the pitch, the ball, bent front leg, but at the last moment, the bottom hand comes in strong. Small over pitching here. Richardson coming forward and stroking it through the covers for four. Richardson, who's been there for a while, beginning to play a bit freer now. Feeling a lot more confident now. He's got used to the pace and bounce in the wicket, and he's coming into his own here. Well, he's hit four fours from the last eight balls he's received. That's caught. He's gone. Well, Roger Harper was talking to us about slip catching and how good it's been in this match. And Graham Gooch catches Richie Richardson, who scored 34. And the sixth wicket goes down now. Beautifully taken, 167 for six. Richardson actually coming down with that bat, opening the face. I think that ball may have hit more of the face of the bat than the edge and off offering Graham Gooch a simple catch. That's a very good shot indeed, and Angus Fraser's furiously overpitched. Ezra Mosley delighted. 
He suddenly remembered how to play the off drive. Well, Ezra Mosley is no rabbit, as the people in the Central Lancashire League will tell you here. And Fraser over pitching and Mosley having no problem hitting that straight through mid off for four. Nice, clean shot, straight through the line of the ball, no problem. Lovely shots. Straight ball, lean on it, and a crack on the bat. He certainly can bat. And so the West Indies lead now goes on to 90. Having said that, he takes full advantage of a straight half volley here from Small. Ball over pitch and mostly hitting straight through the line of the ball here. Another crisp one again, and that might well beat Stewart. Brilliant stop. How they do it, I'll never know. It's tremendous stuff. Well, the Saman tree there on the western side of the ground, a few clouds. Oh, good one. Now he wants to home straight in at that middle stump. In the air, got him, well taken, Lammy. Good catch, magnificent catch, just outside off stump. The shortish ball there. And Lamb very quick to move to his left. That was going very quickly in that direction. And Lamb made a superb catch. He has another look at it. Short, outside off stump. He has a little flirt at it. Straight to Lamb. And that was very well taken. They never easy had slipped. That's the end of Ezra Mosley. And it's now 200 for seven. Well saved. I'll run out. I'll run out here. And it's Carl Hooper who is gone. It's Carl Hooper who has run out. That is a tragedy for the West Indies. Carl Hooper, the specialist batsman out there. Curtly Ambrose is the one who really should have stopped, sacrificed his hand. Robin Smith, the fielder, and as I said, well, we ain't seen nothing yet. This is. Absurd, it's ludicrous, defies all logic that Carl Hooper, the man in charge out there, suddenly finds Kirtley Ambrose striding past him and leaving him stranded. This is how it happened. He liked the shot and off he went. That's just about it. But what a good stop. And look, he strides past the, the batsman, the man who's in control. Carl Hooper there is dumbstruck. He's hit that down the ground for four. Magnificent shot. Running away into the fence, and that's brought them out of their seats. The West Indies lead by 136. Every one counts. The bugles are blowing. Wide, but well hit. Well, he really does clutter them, Kirtley Ambrose. His right foot is nowhere near the pitch of the ball, but he's a full swing of the bat. And when he gets that wood on the ball, it really races away have a look at his eyes there opens his mouth as the ball arrives and boy take that i think he might have enjoyed that he's not the greatest runner in the world is Curtly ambrose but having run hooper out he's not done a bad job now he's uh, got himself to 18 not out Oh, he's had a go. That has got him. He's out caught behind. He's got him. He's struck from around the wicket. A little flash at that ball outside off stump. And England never want to forget that. Every time he comes in, go around the wicket because he doesn't like it very much at all. There it is. A little faint nick. Way, way wide that one was. Straight through to the keeper. And so that's the end of a very useful knock from Kirtley Ambrose. It's 234 for nine. Four balls after that, and they were off for bad light. As for the batting, Greenwich and Haynes, a lovely partnership of 96, and then four wickets for four runs in eight balls. Noughts for best, and Dujon 
Richardson and Hooper, I thought, played the best attacking shots, a real fight back, but it was upset by a crazy run out. And then Ambrose and Bishop put on 34, 234 for nine at the close. It was Devon Malcolm, the destroyer, three wickets for no runs in four balls and five wickets in a test match for the first time in his career. He was the man who got the speed and the bounce, although, of course, he got very tired by the end. Another England victory.